Hello, good morning. Welcome to Joy News. That's good. Coming to you live from our studios in Kokum Limne. Coming up this morning, traders take over on Quanta Street as a central market is deserted for fear of reprisals in spite of the presence of security. Details as two more persons were killed on Sunday, bringing the death toll of this month's clashes to 10. Also this morning, check your own house, not me. President Ekofuadu tells the Speaker of Parliament as he refuses to accept responsibility for not assenting to the criminal amendment bill, which seeks to criminalize accusations of witchcraft. But why has it taken three months for the bill to travel the four-kilometer road from Parliament to the Jubilee House? We will tell you why. Plus, Trade Minister Katie Hammond reveals he has reached a consensus with a minority to finally lay the import regulation seeking to restrict the importation of 22 items after three failed attempts. Details as the Trade Minister refutes claims that passage of the regulation could lead to corruption. And today, in today's episode of Stories of Hope, we'll tell you about an Eastern Region teacher's innovation. Uh, solution to ensure no girl in Adolfo misses school because of expensive sanitary pads. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Let's settle for the details. Traders in the Nkwanta South Municipality have taken over the main streets for business on Monday, a week after ethnic clashes and imposition of a curfew on the township. Traders argue they do not feel safe at the market despite the heavy presence of security personnel on the grounds. On Sunday, two people died from gunshots, giving rise to fears of possible attacks. The killings bring the death toll of this month's clashes to 10. OT regional correspondent Peter Seno has more in the following report. It is day eight of the clashes here in the Quanta South municipality and almost a week of the imposition of curfew on them to restrict their movement to cause further mayhem on one another. It's Monday and it is a market day here, but traders have vacated the market, taking over the streets for their safety. They tell Joy News they do not believe or trust their stay in the market for anybody to hide anywhere and shoot among them just as it happened last week. We have been speaking to a lot more of people to gauge the understanding of how this is affecting education, businesses and general supply of goods and services. Previously we are at the central market, but due to the this in the fighting. We have come to a uh, home, still here. But why, why did you go to the market? Because the, the police, the, the, the soldiers are in. They are in. As you can see, they are always in their cars. We are afraid. Being there, we don't know what is going to happen. That's why we have come here. This place is a plain place. Anything you can see it to yourself. We are just pleading with them to come to our aid. These days, even going out is difficult. How to get things for yourself becomes very difficult. So we are pleading with them to come to our aid. If not so, oh, hmm. we are even planning to run away. It's affecting our business so much, very well. Now the thing, they are not buying their fish. And moreover too, things are not moving on. And things that we saw, let's say 100 cities, people will say 120 cities, and it's not good. So please, they should do something about it for us. Great. We are not safe, so we can't be at the market because we are scared. We don't know what is going to happen. Maybe we'll be at the market square and maybe something will happen, so we can't be there. Gospel fact, we are suffering, we are suffering. Not only we are Kada workers, entire, entire community, we are suffering very much because the conflict is conflict between some two other and three other tribes. 
but it happens that we, the foreigners, and we, the strangers, are here. It's worrying us too much. So we are pleading for the stakeholders to come in our behalf, to come and help us. If not, we are suffering too much. The social life, economical, everything has affected a lot. Prices of things has gone high. As I came with my wife to buy things, the prices have gone high, and a lot of people are not able to come from their villages to send their goods. And with the teachers too, the students are gone. We are seated at home. Night, we are frightened. Maybe we can get some attack. Even though we are not involved because we are not the tri those two tribes. Those of us who are there, uh, I think that we thank the government for bringing some police and military men to come secure us. But currently, economically, things have gone high. Things have gone high. And we those who are having farms, nearby farms, we can't go there to bring our feed staff to the house. That is our main problem. But we thank God we are still alive. Education uh, is going to be one of the sufferers of this new episode. Already we have shortage of teachers in the area and we've all along been praying that uh, we'll be getting more to supplement the effort of education. But with the new uh, episode at Nkwantasaf, uh, it is going to retard a lot of educational progress. The MC for the area, Bright Lemwa, is calling on residents to put down their arms and give peace a chance so that Nkwanta South could go back to its past glory. My very last and most important message to the people of Nkwanta is to give peace a chance. Like I said earlier, we are all brothers and sisters. We understand and speak each other's language. It's just a little misunderstanding that is between among us. Let us sit down. Let us give peace. A all the various people that are trying to bring us together and for us to lay down our answers, let us listen to them and then we want people as we used to be. So you have heard the residents, their complaints and what they want authorities to do in the shortest possible time for Nkwanta to go back to its past glory in terms of how businesses thrive here in the municipality. Joy News. My name is Peter Senu. We can now speak with OT Regional Correspondent Peter Senu, who joins us live with more. Peter, uh, what can you say about security in that area as far as uh, the uh, market people are concerned? Hi, Aisha. Security, as we witnessed yesterday, uh, it's, it's okay. A number of police personnel have been deployed to Nkwanta municipality, and then we saw quite a number of the Ghana Armed Forces personnel also are deployed to the area as we, we, we went to the grounds yesterday to witness. And so the main Nkwanta town relatively is calm, but the worrying situation is that uh, the, the, the feuding factions, the ethnic uh, groupings in these uh, disturbances have now moved the fight to the periphery, to the outskirts of the town. So despite the presence of the military, of the police service in town, the, the fight is not taken outside, which is making it a bit difficult. For, uh, not, I don't know. I, I can't say difficult, though, but it's making it a bit dicey so as to ensure that there is maximum peace for the town to, I mean, for the peace to be restored to the area. But security, is uh, the presence is, is in town. The, the last time we spoke with the regional minister, he assured us that um, everything was under control. How is he, as, uh, as, uh, as well as the RECSEG, also handling the situation? Well, uh, our attempt to get to the regional minister has not been successful as to speak. Uh, we tried placing a concern, a few messages. So we, can, we have not sought his understanding uh, for the present development, but it, it should be a cause of worry, especially for the music. Uh, a lot more, the assembly has, uh, has been shut down. There's nobody working at the assembly as of yesterday. Um, the MC himself uh, is at his residence, and so the, the assembly is, is, is down. There, there's nobody there, let alone even to call for a municipal uh, um, security council meeting. And so it, it's a cause for worry for all of them, though, but the, their position is what I should say the MC stated with me yesterday when I spoke with him. Aisha. Peter Seno is our OT regional correspondent. Definitely will bring you more from that area as and when we get more. Back here in Accra, the journey 
from Parliament House to the seat of the presidency, the Jubilee House, is less than four kilometers, and an average vehicle speed will take you less than five minutes to reach the presidency. But it has taken Parliament three months to forward the amended criminal offenses bill to the president for his assent. The bill passed in August this year prohibits the practice of accusing others of witchcraft and criminalizes the declaration, accusation, naming, or labeling of another person as a witch. The goal of the bill is to address the persecution of people accused of witchcraft. But yesterday, Speaker of Parliament and the minority leadership took on the president for refusing to assent to the bill, accusing him of violating the Constitution. The Criminal Offences Amendment Bill, together with the Witchcraft Bill, was approved by this House months ago. Speaker... These are bills that I have personally followed. And I'm aware that the bills after approval, after passage by this House, were sent to the President months ago, Mr. Speaker. It's almost two months now. So clearly, Mr. Speaker, there is a constitutional breach. And this House must take steps to deal with the constitutional breach that we have seen on the criminal amendment bill and that of the witchcraft amendment bill. Mr. Speaker, it's important that we take steps to deal with that. Clearly, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution guides us as to what we have to do when the President fails to assent to bills that has been approved by this House. So, Mr. Speaker, we, we are in your so that in the coming days we may have to engage you and then take steps to have this matter resolved. Well, the majority leader, said Chairman Sabun, who defended the president, insisting the bill was yet to reach the presidency. Of course, the bill has come to be known as the witchcraft bill. The parliament has passed states, and it was done in July. And um, ordinarily, it should have been sent to the, the president for his assent. I must state, in fact, that those bills have not been sent to the president for his assent. The speaker knows about it. And I'm surprised that he came and, uh, and this address made it appear as if the president was trapping on the constitution. Nothing can be further from the truth. And going through, I realized that there were major challenges. Things that parliament ought to have paid attention to. Unfortunately, I don't know whether it was because you were rushing through, you did not pay attention to them. So when I looked at them, I invited our um, officers at the legislative unit and drew their attention to them. Because when I looked at them, I made some comments. For instance, the head notes raises issues to do with... Uh, you know, more or less uh, professional um, witchcraft hunters. With a professional witchcraft hunter. Right? I mean, that in itself is problematic. And then the, the, there were so many areas that there were uh, clear challenges. Uh, now, do you send that bill in that state to the president for his assent only for it to, be, uh, for it to come back? Or maybe for the president in, in the process of uh, sending to it to chance upon these mistakes and send them back to us. Is that what you want to do? There's a third one that has gone to the president. That is also another criminal offenses amendment bill. But that one, that one has some constitutional issues. You know, the constitution provides that... A bill, if a bill um, that is going to exact on the, on the uh, consolidated fund, it cannot be entertained in the House if it is not sponsored by the executive. Now, that bill relates to um, commuting executions to life sentences. If the cost put Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. 
So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Ay, mija, abuelita's on her way and I still need to shop for the party. No worries. Let's order through Instacart. Insta qué? Sí, llama. We can order groceries and more online and get everything delivered in as fast as an hour. Everything for dinner? Carne, tortillas, limas, plátanos. Claro. Anything else? Just make sure the plátanos are ripe. Get groceries delivered same day with Instacart so you have more time for family. Visit instacart.com or download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. Wendy's Peppermint Frosty and Frosty Cream Cold Brew make the perfect gift for anyone in your life. Especially for you. Yeah, this year you're sitting on your own lap and getting yourself what you want. Finally. And now every day this season, unlock 20% off your total when you get any small, medium, or large Frosty in the Wendy's app. So order something from your own wish list this year. Limited time only. Participating U.S. Wendy's with app offer and registration. Applies to menu items only. Taxes and fees excluded. Counts that somebody uh, must be executed. And then you are saying that that person should not be executed. You will be sent to prison. Maybe for life. Who takes care of that person? It's the state. Right? So the state then is going to have to spend money from the consolidated fund on So there the president is responding to the subject. My colleague Elton Broby joins us with more from the presidency. Elton, what exactly does the president's statement say? So uh, I said there are two statements here from the president. One is a letter that was written to the secretary to the president from the clerk of parliament. Mm-hmm. No, so the president's statement on this matter is a, is, is a press release. And it says that dated November 28th, that's today, the office of the president has noted recent media reports suggesting that the president has declined to assent to the criminal offenses amendment number two bill, a legislative measure aimed at amending the criminal offenses at 1960. Indeed, the Speaker of Parliament, Arban Babin, is reported on Monday, 27 November, to have rebuked President Kufado over silence on the criminal amendment bill. Now, the statement goes on to say that it is important. At the onset, that amendment is specifically designed to outlaw the rules of which doctors or which finders, in addition to prohibiting the act of declaring, accusing, naming, or labeling an individual as a witch alongside other related matters. Contrary to the claims made in these reports by the Speaker of Parliament and the Minority Caucus of Parliament, President Kufar has not remained silent on the bill. And they have a question How could the Speaker of Parliament accuse a president? of remaining silent on a bill when it was specifically and officially presented to him on Monday, November 27, 2023, the same day the Speaker made the accusations. Indeed, the bill was officially presented to the President for his assent, together with the Wildlife Resources Management Bill and the National Petroleum Authority Amendment Bill, under cover of a letter dated 27th November, and the reference here is provided. It is inaccurate, according to the Presidency, that a bill has been sitting on the decks of the president without receiving the due attention. President Kufar, according to the statement, uh, affords him seven days, as per the Constitution, to review and give his assent to any bill presented to him. In the light of this constitutional provision, it is important to know that the president is still well within the legally stipulated time frame to make a decision regarding the bill. During this period, the president, according to the statement, may examine the bill uh, and, if necessary, convey any concerns or suggestions he might have regarding the content to the president. The office of the president has shown the public and the media that the bill, including his current bill, the criminal offenses amendment, have been attended to with the ordinary respect for constitutional mandates and legislative processes. And this is signed by the director of communications of the presidency, Eugene Ayan. So what next uh, now that the president has received the bill? Well, actually, if you go through the president's statement that's signed by the director of communication, he mentioned, for example, that the president received the, the bill yesterday to the office of the secretary from the clerk of parliament. They, they, they have provided a letter uh, that came from the clerk of parliament. It's also dated the 27th of November, 2023. And the content says that please find and close eight copies, each of the following bills, 
which were passed by Parliament and duly authenticated by me for assent by His Excellency the President. And the bills are the Criminal Offence Amendment Bill, Wildlife Resources Management Bill, and the National Petroleum Authority Bill. And this is signed by the clerk to Parliament, Ebenezer, the Deputy Clerk, Ebenezer Ahoma Jetro, uh, presented to the Secretary to the President yesterday. Now, per the Constitution, the President has seven days to study the bill. And if he's comfortable with it, you will sign, sign on to it, and, and it, it, it will not become law. If the president has any reservation at all, we we'll have to put it in writing and then refer it back to parliament for them to sit and go through the consensus of the president. And then if parliament is so minded to put it before the house for consideration, they will do so and then return it back to return it to the president for this assented. So there may be a back and forth, but whatever it is, the president is within the constitutionally mandated seven days within which to go to the bill if that's concerned, raise them, and then take it back to the House. Uh, any idea what might have caused a delay in sending the bill to the President, Elton? Well, it's very unclear. Perhaps the clerk office can best explain, but from my experience as uh, a parliamentary correspondent, usually when a bill is passed, and it's uh, an asset custom with parliamentary parties, even after every day's proceedings, the next day is dedicated to the correction of votes and proceedings, and then they'll move on to correct the official reports, maybe the previous week. So it is always fine-tuned. So once the bill is passed, the class office responsibility is to ensure that everything that was said on the floor and everything that was accepted approval of the floor is incorporated into the bill. And then when that is done, the club will then have to present to the leadership for them to go through that. If there are corrections, uh, they are effected. If there is none, that is where the club will now put it together and then with a letter attack, send it to the office of the president for the president assent. And then if the president has no consent to raise, and once he signs, he goes to assembly press, they do the gazetting and it becomes a law. So they may have been back and forth regarding comments, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues that were raised on the floor that may have, that, that, that took time for them to incorporate into the bill. Or better still, maybe the class office is overwhelmed with a lot of issues on the desk that has come in delay, but whatever it is, the, according to the correspondence that we have, it, the bill was officially presented to the secretary, to the president, yesterday, Monday, 27th November. The president has indicated that there are seven days as per the constitutional mandate to go to review it and then communicate his consent to parliament, if he's so minded. Elton Brobe, with that, uh, the details from the uh, statement from the presidency, I've also been joined by Lam Matu Adams of Song Taba. I'm grateful for your time, madam. I know how important this law is to you. How does it come across to you that since August after its passage uh, into law, the president only received it uh, yesterday for assent? Thank you very much. Good morning to our viewers. Um, I think it's the same question that came to us when I read the, uh, the Director of Communication. I was asking myself, whose responsibility it is to make sure that the bill got to the President? And also, whose responsibility was it to make sure that they made follow-up? And so, if we did not know whose responsibility was it and whose responsibility it was to make a follow-up, then there is a challenge there. And the question we ask ourselves is, is it that this bill is of no interest? Because I remember this whole years of our engagement, especially in this year, we have continuously engaged the gender ministry. And it was clearly that uh, the issues around which was the ministry's priority. And so this has come I'm the surprise that um, the bill is just getting to, to the presidency. And so I don't want to be part of the argument. Apart from the question that we, uh, the coalition against witchcraft accusation are asking, we are also demanding that the president should, as a matter of agency, bill and make the comments that they think is necessary. But it is our hope that we would have had this bill has within these 16 days of activism, especially as we are calling on putting investment around uh, uh, protecting vulnerable groups, women and children. And so, Aisha, this, this is of a serious concern to us. 
If issues around witchcraft accusation is, 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 is not prioritized to this extent, then, then, then it's so sad. Now that the thing has reached the president for assent, what are your expectations, Lamnatu? Well, like I said, the expectation is that the president should quickly look at it. Uh, I heard the majority leader say there are some concerns. So the, the team should quickly look at it. And I think that should be a major issue that should take the president time. And like I said, we are demanding that at least in this period of the 16 days of activism, which activism, which is around gender-based violence, the president should please send his signature to this. Thank I'm grateful for your time. She's executive director of Song Taba, and they've, they've been uh, really hard on uh, Parliament to pass this bill into law. Let's see how that pans out now that the president has received that bill passed into law. Now, over 4,000 basic education certificate examination candidates have been placed into various schools following a successful completion of the exam some three months ago. The highly anticipated system went live, marking a crucial step in streamlining the placement process for students transitioning to senior high schools across the country. This system not only eases the anxiety for students and their families, but also enhances the transparency transparency and fairness of the placement process. However, over 108 students could not be matched and have been advised to do a self-placement. Cassandra Chumampofo is Public Relations Director at the Ghana Education Service. She'll be joining us shortly uh, for a conversation on this. Uh, one of the things we'll be asking is how smooth this has been, what people should do when they have problems and uh, she'll be telling us all of that if we are able to reach her. I'm told Cassandra um, Trum has joined us now. Cassandra, grateful to have you. How smooth was this year's placement process? Right, we lost Cassandra there. Let's get on to other stories. The Trade uh, Minister, Katie Hammond, has revealed that he has reached consensus with a minority to finally lay the import regulation seeking to restrict the importation of rice, cow, stomach, and 20 other items. The legislative instrument has met fierce opposition from the minority, who have three times blocked its laying in Parliament. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Joy News, the Trade Minister says the two sides have finally come to an agreement. We'll be bringing you the sound of Katie Hammond shortly and also get some reactions uh, shortly for you but let's go back to our earlier story on school placement because Cassandra Chum who is public relations officer at the Ghana Education Service has joined us. Cassandra um, how smooth has this year's placement process been? Hello Cassandra. Hello good morning. Tell me about how the placement uh, has been this year. Thank you so much. Um, and good morning to all your viewers. Yes, um, it, it's been quite um, a smooth process. Um, we received the data from YX after the release of the results. And then we began our placement processes. And today we've gone live. And then um, out of the 598,839 results received from YX, we had 585,797 candidates are qualified. And so um, when we did our, our algorithm, we had a total of 477,772 representing 81.56. And I must say that this is a, there's a significant um, improvement compared to last year's figures, and we've had over 100,000 um, candidates getting school for their choices this year. Um, and so, um, but we still have about 108,025 qualified candidates that, again, could not be matched with any of their choices. And so, such candidates. Uh, we'll have to go through the self-placement model where we have uploaded 
many schools that still have vacancies. In fact, we have enough vacancies, and so such students would have to do the self placement um, themselves. And so I would say that it's been a smooth process. Um, uh, yes, even though we have had concerns this morning that they will be going on the fourth of um, December, or registration or orientation begins on the fourth of um, on the uh, on the fourth of December, and yet we have released them um, with uh, the placement today. Um, we, for us, we believe that we check the um, prospectus ahead of time. We publish this, and then we made um, parents and schools aware of the prospectus, and so we knew that at least parents have started some form of preparation, especially those that knew they would place the boarding house, have begun buying their stuff, and so yes, even though we recognize that it's quite a short time of the thought, we, we had already put um, the prospectus way ahead, and this time we have them harmonized prospectus, and so um, you wouldn't have schools having different prospectus that would create problems. We have one for all. And so, um, you know, it's been, it's been a smooth process, and uh, we found out that we have... Cassandra, so, so the 108,000 uh, people who could not be matched with their schools, what happened? What happened? Because, you know, our system is such that you cannot be placed in a school that you have no children. And so, if, you know, this year, for instance, again, we ask the candidates to select 11 schools. They are normal six schools, and then they added another five, so that in case you do not get any of your six schools out of marriage, you will then fall on the five choice. It therefore means that these, um, this 108,025 did not get any of the 11 schools on based on marriage. And I must say that this 120 is just um, a minimal number compared to what we had last year. Last year we had 165,619 candidates that did self-placement. So it tells you that there has been improvement, indeed they have done well. And so we have these few numbers and they, I want to use the opportunity to assure all such candidates who would fall within the self-placement and send that we have a number of schools uploaded. They shouldn't worry. We only want them to go onto the portal because we cannot choose the schools for them. They have to self place themselves into a school. So, so where can people go if they encounter difficulties? Yes. As usual, we have set up a national solution center at the North Hall at Abraka. Again, we also have our regional solution center in all our regional offices. Those that are in far districts can also get to their district offices, and then we have our officers that would also put together the concerns so they would forward to the regional um, solution center and would solve. Nonetheless, we also have our call center number, and this goes for all the um, GES and key um, institutions. And so, 030-825-8001. Um, parents, candidates can also call, um, and we'll be there to, to help them explain issues or help them address their concerns. Uh, and as we speak, Cassandra, I'm hearing that the page is uh, people are not able to access the page so they can check their placement. Is there a general problem? There's not a general problem at all. And, you know, um, we just went, we went fairly an hour ago, and it's expected that you have a number of people waiting to get into the system. It's just like opening a door, a smaller door, probably asking about 200 or 300 people to get through the smaller door. Definitely there will be some people. We ask them to exercise patients, definitely they will get through. And joy at your end. Um, Fred is, is, is one set of example, Fred Smith, whose um, daughter just um, got in. I mean, he just checked and gave us a feedback, and the daughter has gotten um, what's his girl on marriage, you know. So people are checking, people are getting through. Of course, we acknowledge that some are also having difficulties, but we should exercise um, patients, definitely they will get through. It's just because of the rush. Everyone at this particular point in time wants to get in. But it will, be, it will definitely go through for them. Before you go, though, uh, let me ask you this. There were allegations of providing infested rice to schools by the minority uh, last week. How far were your investigations into the matter? Thank you so much for this question, Aisha. You know that yesterday I was particularly tasked 
to call all the regional directors of education to engage their heads and to report. And let me tell you that none, none of the regional directors gave us the information that they have received or any of their schools within their region have received a bag, even a single bag of maggots infested rice. And so we do not know where that report was coming from. But the investigation, which I personally said, we didn't find any. So that is false. All right. I'm grateful for your time. Cassandra Chum Ampo, for she's head of public relations unit at the Ghana Education Service. Let's get on to our earlier story where Minister for Trades and Industry, KT Hammond, is revealing that he has reached consensus with the minority to finally lay the import regulation seeking to restrict the importation of rice, cow stomach, and 20 other items. The legislative instrument has met fierce opposition from the minority who have three times blocked its laying in Parliament. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Joy News, the Trade Minister says the two sides have finally come to an ac agreement. He has also refuted claims that the legislation instrument could lead to corruption. There's nothing before Parliament. No, of course. I mean, of course, I know because, you know, but the, the pre-laying conversations have happened. Yeah. So your colleagues have it, and yeah. that's where I got this one. Yeah. When was this clause added? I'm not sure. It was always there. It was, it was always, always there. there. I'm not sure why. Uh, why? I tell but, you what. But, but, I don't know where you but, got but this it's from. But it's a fair question. When, when was this? No, no, no. It's one? always been there. It was always. Look at the other one. Two, two. I just told you about the one that they thought they were interested and later on shifted their interest. Uh, the cement one. Uh, We'll come to the cement one. Yeah, it's clearly there, so but, I don't but, know but, where but, but my substantive question It's remains. always been there. My, question, my substantive question remains. Yes. You're actually saying that. Again, within the confines of the act, yeah. you are the final authority. Of course, the courts then have to now decide whether yeah, you're right somebody, or not. Somebody, administratively, but, somebody would have to be the authority to make a decision. Yeah. In this case, it's uh, double-layed. The committee and then to the minister. You're not happy with the minister's decision, go to court. But, but, why, but, why, but why do you want to create that avenue for the minister to have that level of discretion, which, obviously, from our history, leaves room for you to be magnified. Uh, that's a ball that I shall tell you. Be, that's don't let be, beyond don't you. Don't let her remember that. that. That's, that's, beyond that's, you, there'll be ministers, there'll be ministers, there'll be ministers, be ministers that, beyond that, you who so have to you enforce at, this. Why are you looking at me, Katie? The, okay, let's talk but about the minister. You. But why this do you is think institutional. That, no, no, absolutely. But why do you, you, you think you, that you, people you, are you, 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 you may be a saint. No, no, no. no you no, may no, be a saint, but somebody no, may no, occupy no, your seat no, tomorrow. No, no, no. Don't claim to be a saint. No, no. You tell me somebody may occupy your seat tomorrow. And that person who doesn't believe in cannot lay claim to infallibility. But nobody is going to access this and be able to thereby corrupt themselves. I mean, what do you make of the reference to the court? I mean, I don't understand. But in this country, yes. it goes without saying be that, careful. that, be that careful the ultimate, the ultimate decision, decision makers, I mean, Mr. Kate, I mean, yeah. you know you're a lawyer, no, so you know, know that, even no. if parliament decides, yes. the yeah. ultimate deciders are always a court. So you, mm -hmm. actually this clause yes. is just stating the obvious. That what? That, that, what? that in, in all circumstances, yes. if you're dissatisfied with any decision of any yeah. entity, yes. You can go to court. Yeah. You have recourse but to court. But, 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 but the fact that you stated it here, if you're conscious of the fact that the addition has nothing to it, then why were you hammering on the fact that, well, it isn't on your document well, and that place have any... Your point is? My point is this. It was on the strength of this that I proceeded to lay the document the day after. But we've heard the minority leader say that... They oppose. That's what I call duplicity. This is the committee that I was compelled... Contrary to the demands of the regulations, uh, demands of the constitution and the standing orders, to go before, to explain myself, and this is the report, to the minority leadership. And then they come back to tell me that, well, they don't know about it, uh, what am I... Uh, this was in the 22nd of That was a conversation with Evans Mensa uh, yesterday. Industry players are, however, remaining divided over their support for the regulation. Executive Secretary of the Food and Beverages Association, John Awuni, describes the minister's statement that they have been consulted as untrue. He joins us live for a conversation. Uh, uh, John Awuni, I'm grateful for your time. The minister insists that you guys have been consulted, and you say he didn't? 
Good morning, Aisha, and good morning to your uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that uh, the minister will speak on public and declare that uh, we have been consulted. Aisha, he's, the minister is a lawyer. Giving out information to people is different from consultation. Consultation, by my understanding, is giving out your idea of a subject matter and listening to the receiver, his also idea. Then you will all dialogue and come to a consensus. Indeed, if we were consulted, Aisha, we will not come out and be speaking the way we speak. We don't even have to come out. Do we or all the groups? The Ghana Union of Traders Association, Food and Beverage Association, Ghana Chambers, Ghana Importers and Exporters Association, Ghana Automobile Association, Ghana uh, Institute of Free for all the business groups in this country. Do we sound like people who were consulted? No. Clearly, we were not consulted. And if we were consulted, me, to be part of this, this document will not come out like this. I have too much expertise in the industry to allow a document like this to go to Parliament. A document that goes to Parliament seeking to restrict imports, seeking to ban importation of certain products. Yet there is nothing on the ground. There is no logic on the ground to point to the fact that you have put things in place. The man says the they are not banning the importation of products. They are restricting. He wants us to stick with that word. Yes, we can restrict with that word. It is just the issue of semantics. If you want to restrict imports, how does a nation or does an individual restrict imports without providing alternatives? You want to restrict imports. Who is producing of sugar? Who is producing sugar in Ghana? Maybe it is the minister and his cronies who now want to start importing sugar. Who is the producer of sugar in this country? That sugar is on the list. You want to restrict rice. Who and who are the producers of rice? Who are the wholesalers of the rice? Who are the retailers of the rice? Low-level economics, which I did, or low-level commerce, which I did, taught me that production is not complete until it reaches the final consumer. Now, for a system like this, or for an LILR to go before parliament, you would have needed, as an, a minister, to put in place identifiable producers Link these producers to the wholesalers, wholesalers to the retailers, and then you identify that is step number one. Step number two, you identify at what price these producers are going to produce, and at what price will it be at the final consumer, so that the consumer will not be abused or will not be hurt. Number three, what quantities will these producers be producing over what period to enable the wholesalers plan? I'm giving simple, just free consultancy to the minister. There's a lot we can do. I could never have been part of this document and to be like this with all humility. I have had so much experience in the industry over 20 years as a consultant, as a researcher, as the president of the Ghana Rights as a professional body. I will, could never have been part of this document for this document to come out like this. Indeed, Aisha, it is important for every country to work at strategies to improve upon its production, to improve upon its self-sufficiency. Indeed, wholesalers or the importers will, of all those products listed will be very happy to buy their goods locally because clearly they will have nothing to do with foreign exchange volatilities. You don't have to buy a product and then tomorrow the exchange rate changes and then you are in trouble. So we will all be very happy about that. But you cannot send an LI of such magnitude to Parliament. When you have clearly done nothing on the ground, it defies logic. He is the lawyer, and law is about logic. So what is carried out there, there is no logic in it because you have done nothing on the ground. Let him tell us the farmers he dealt with. Let him tell us the farmers, what quantities those farmers, whether they are poultry, whether they are rice, whether they are uh, cables, whether they are tiles, they are goats produce whatever well the, the, the minister the minister intends to lay the ally again in parliament in spite of all the resistance i mean what has become of your petition to parliament it's a shame that a minister he will continue to insist on a wrong that he has done 
clearly the when I listened to Parliament when they rejected it for the first, they told him that go back and do consultations with the key stakeholders. Has he done that? Has he contacted Guta? Has he contacted Food and Beverage Association? Has he contacted the chamber of uh, the chamber of agri uh, agri uh, agri, uh, agri farmers? They have we are there is a chamber led by one Philip Abayor. Has he contacted the, that chamber? Who and who has that minister uh, 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 contacted and he's going back to parliament? I realized, I heard that he just, in the uh, so he stood in some corner and cancelled cement. It is in the in parliament that he even realized that cement, we don't even need to import cement. And, uh, cement is not necessarily to be restricted. But well, it's in the chamber. So this man has gone to consult nothing. Maybe there is something driving him beyond the interest of the ordinary Ghanaian. But he showed us a document. Ghanian. He showed us a document, Mr. Awuni, that shows that, I mean, the uh, Guta Chamber of Commerce and other of your groups are part of that committee that will determine who uh, brings in such product. It is not part, Aisha. We are talking professional, number one. If he says, show that this document will be part. Listen, you don't restrict something. I say your husband, if you are married, your husband cannot come home and say that don't cook rice in the house again when the woman has not given you something utility. The man is leaving uh, home for work and tells you that in the evening, don't cook rice. So what should I cook? Wendy's Peppermint Frosty and Frosty Cream Cold Brew make the perfect gift for anyone in your life, especially for you. Yeah, this year you're sitting on your own lap and getting yourself what you want. Finally. And now every day this season, unlock 20% off your total when you get any small, medium, or large Frosty in the Wendy's app. So order something from your own wish list this year. Limited time only. Participating U.S. Wendy's with app offer and registration. Applies to menu items only. Taxes and fees excluded. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money. A Wells Fargo CD account where you can earn a 5.00% annual percentage yield on an 11-month term with a minimum opening deposit of $5,000. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that thinking about helmets with faces on them. I should get a new helmet. Ooh, maybe I'll get one of those ones that looks like a face with painted teeth and eyebrows, you know? Oh, that always looks so cool. People are like, whoa, is that a person with two faces? Oh, no, it's a helmet. And one face. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. And what you should cook, it should be available. What we are saying is that this minister and those people who are pushing for this policy have done nothing. I heard him in the interview saying that uh, Zoom Lion has promised to produce rice by uh, December. As it is now, he has not produced because we haven't restricted. Does Zoom Lion need restrictions of, 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 of uh, rice before he can produce? If the lion wants to produce rice and he's not sure about marketers, he should see me. I will link our producers and marketers to him, and he will buy. We don't need to restrict rice before they will buy. Uh, they will do, uh, he will produce. Let them go ahead and produce. I brought in investors in the year 22, in the year 2004 to produce sugar in this country. This investor said they should increase tariffs in this country where they can produce sugar. His Excellency, the President, John Ajepun Kufuo, said he will not do that until they prove their work on the ground. We repeated the same investors with uh, uh, His Excellency, the late President, Atamil. Atamil said, no, he will not do it until they prove their work on the ground. We repeated that with His Excellency, John Mahama. He said he will not do it until they prove their work on the ground. Which manner of man goes to war with that first counting, uh, checking his, uh, his strength? The minister is going to war, saying that he's going to restrict imports, and he has not even counted the first of I'm grateful for your time. John Awuni is uh, executive director of, of the uh, Food and Beverages Association. They say they will resist uh, this ally with all that they can. Let's take a break on Joy News Desk or we'll return its business. <laughs> Your 
Your day is never dull when you tune into Joy Prime. Wake up to Prime Morning on weekdays as Rosling, KMJ, and Asiedua kickstart your day with breakfast of issues. The entire explains Sarkodia can promise at the Grammy absence. Stay informed with our news updates, sports coverage, all interlaced with captivating novella series. Sandwiching the thrilling telenovelas is our comprehensive news at 7. Unwind with Sports Zone, Mondays at 9 p.m., BMPS Show, Friday at 9 p.m. and groove to the turn up general selections at 10 p.m. on weekdays. The weekend is packed with loads of excitement from kids' programs to captivating talk shows. Stay tuned for action-packed movies from Monday to Sunday and many other exciting shows only on Joy Prime. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Oh, banana. banana, banana. We should try it, especially my banana. Your superstation love 99.5 FM in partnership with the brilliant minds behind your favorite cut series. KDT vs. Makola comes to your latest comedy master, Banana and Melon Movie. Meet Henry, a man on a do or die mission to win the hat of his lover, Afi. But Afi seems to have other plans. Are you an Yes, Afi. Ooh, ooh, Afi, you're lucky. I'm lucky. Yes, I'm looking for an hour. You're an hour. Starring the incredibly talented Louise Lamis, the fantastic Atidazi, and the lovely Isabella Etona, comedian Kweku 40, and many more. <laughs> Don't miss the grand premiere in Kumasi on December 2nd at the CCB Auditorium, KNUSD, and their two show times, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Tickets are available for just 60 Ghana CD single and 100 Ghana CDs couple. Tickets are available at Front Desk of Love FM, Poku Trading Supermarket, Adum, IC Cup, KNUSD Commercial Area. Sponsors. One, two, give me the dance. Let's go, sir. Hello, with everybody for you. I did your shake, shake, bellow. But it's a moon, bellow. Your favorite TV game show, Step Up, is back with another amazing season. This time, we are stepping up with Syntex Tank. Step up with Syntex Tank. We'll see contestants answer questions of their choice and win over 6,000 Ghana CDs cash prize weekly and other products from our sponsors. This season, viewers at home should watch out for the Syntex Tank question of the week. Be the first to answer correctly via WhatsApp or send SMS to 50 and win incredible prizes. The person who answers most of the weekly questions correctly and fast gets a 65-inch Samsung TV at the end of the season. Step up with Syntex Tan, showing on Joy Prime every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Sponsored by Bell Eyes, MTN Momo, Angel Cola. Powered by Syntex Tan. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao, Chief Executive of the Volta Aluminum Company, Valco. Daniel Titus Glover says the well-being of flat victims will be too huge for a particular entity to shoulder. He says the magnitude of the Akosum Wood Dam spillage disaster requires both state and non-state actors to do their bit in ensuring affected persons do not lose out. Daniel Titus Glover made this known at Adidomain, the Volta region, where the company presented relief items to flat victims. Tama correspondent Kwame Yanka has more. Of empathy for flood victims following overflow of the Volta River upstream and those downstream directly impacted by the spillage of the Akosan Wodam is inevitable. For Volta Aluminum Company, Vaco, the impact of the spillage hits at a different level as the company uses over 20% of power produced by the Volta River Authority. The aluminum smelter feels obliged to help these victims after presenting bags of rice, oil, baby food, mosquito repellents, among other relief items at Adudome in the central town district of the Volta region. Daniel Titus Glover is the chief executive officer of Valco. Normally, we're supposed to produce uh, five cell lines, and each line contains 100 but currently we are producing just 121 which is which is quite low but notwithstanding that we're still using 
power that is produced from Akosopo. Therefore, directly, we have a stake in this problem that has come. VRA alone cannot show that this responsibility. Government alone cannot show that this responsibility. That is why we have come as a company from our board and everybody, the union executives here, to come in. Commensurate with our, our friends and family here. You know, my part is from here too. Okay. And my part is from uh, Jalokope, Danglon Line. My great grandmother, my mother's grandmother, is from here. So I'm equally touched. Chair of the Senior Staff Association at Valco, Samuel Ando, says the company has the flood victims at heart. Yeah, so the reason why we are here this morning is to come and show our uh, love to our brothers who, are, who have been affected by the spillage. So we are here with the, um, some members of the executive management team, that is our CEO and some of our directors. We are also here with some of our, our union executives and members and some other management of VACO to come and you know, support our brothers who have been affected by the floods. We presented some um, boxes of um, oil and um, mosquito um, repellent and um, some rice and uh, toiletries to the affected um, people in this community and some baby foods yeah yeah and some clothes meanwhile deputy director of national disaster management organization nadmu seji saji expressed gratitude after receiving the donation he then explained that nadmu together with other stakeholders are at the recovery stage of the disaster management cycle as we continue to need more support for relief administration Okay, so in the recovery stage, we are also doing uh, an assessment as to the extent of uh, contamination of those particular areas that have been affected. And the UN Interagency Working Group is partnering organizations such as the Ghana Institute of Engineers, EPA, NADMO, VRAs, and all others to make sure that they propose solutions for us to go ahead and do decontamination, dissertation, fumigation, and also look at the structural integrity of the buildings as well, so that the place will be habitable for affected persons to move back in. Valco has appealed for support for flood victims in all affected areas. And that's it for this segment. The news returns after the break. that honors its heroes is worth dying for. After months of rigorous contests for recognition in the regions and districts, the maiden edition of the Ghana Health Service Excellence Awards 2023, the grand finale comes off at the Grand Arena, Accra International Conference Center. Join us, celebrate, and honor our hardworking health professionals. Date, November 29, 2023. Our special guest of honor, Her Excellency, Mrs. Rebecca Akufuado, First Lady, Republic of Ghana. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., there will be an exhibition, free health screening, blood donation, and public lectures. 6 p.m., arrival in style. And at 7 p.m., the main awards event begins. For sponsorship, contact 0244-125-314 or 0543 726-406 Ghana Health Service Excellence Awards Celebrating our heroes Our lifeline One, two, give it a dance Let's go, sir Hello, greet everybody for you I did your shake shake below What is the one there? Your favorite TV game show Step Up is back with another amazing season This time, we are stepping up with Syntex Tank Step up with Syntex Tank. We'll see contestants answer questions of their choice and win over 6,000 Ghana CDs cash prize weekly and other products from our sponsors. This season, viewers at home should watch out for the Syntex Tank question of the week. Be the first to answer correctly via WhatsApp or send SMS to 50 and win incredible prizes. The person who answers most of the weekly questions correctly and fastest gets a 65-inch Samsung TV at the 
end of the season. Step up with Syntex Tan, showing on Joy Prime every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Sponsored by Bell Eyes, MTN Momo, Angel Cola, powered by Syntex Tan. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Oh, banana. We should try it, especially my banana. Your superstation love 99.5 FM in partnership with the brilliant minds behind your favorite court series. KDT vs. Makola comes to your latest comedy master, Banana and Melon Movie. Meet Henry, a man on a do or die mission to win the hat of his lover, Afi. But Afi seems to have other plans. Are you an Yes, Afi. Oh, Afi, you're lucky. I'm lucky. Yes, I'm looking for an Ewen. You're an Starring the incredibly talented Louise Lamise, the fantastic Atidazi, and the lovely Isabella Etonal, comedian Kweku 40, and many more. <laughs> Don't miss the grand premiere in Kumasi on December 2nd at the CCB Auditorium, KNUSD, and their two show times, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Tickets are available for just 60 Ghana CD single and 100 Ghana CDs couple. Tickets are available at Front Desk of Love FM, Poku Trading Supermarket, Adum, IC Cup, KNUSD, Commercial Area. Sponsors. I wrap up the bulletin this morning. My name is Aisha Brian. See you again at 12. Hello and welcome to this special conversation with the Trade and Industry Minister. He is Katie Hammond. As you may well know, in the last few days, in fact, just over a week, there have been significant conversation around one legislative instrument he is attempting to lay in Parliament for it to mature. And this is a very crucial one for him. It is the Restriction of Importation of Selected Strategic Products Regulations 2023 that is proposing to limit the, the importation of some 22 products into the country. There's been a fair bit of controversy around this, and tonight we're going to talk to him, ask him a few hard questions about it, so that we can understand a bit more why this is even necessary at this time. My guest tonight, live on the Jordan Channel, but also live with the show.